was from, and he said Alaska, and then all of a sudden, the clerk, she turns beet red, and the veins pop out in her neck, kind of like Rachel Maddow does sometimes. <laughs> Last time, Doc Coburn, the senator from Oklahoma, who has practiced medicine all his life, the last time he and I were together, I had the amazing opportunity to watch him receive a lecture on health care from a woman named uh, 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 Maddox, a television personality who I'm told has a PhD in something that doesn't matter. I'm not going to wait for the MSNBC lineup to put on their hard hats and stand on an oil rig and do a promotional ad asking this tough question about the potential loss of blue-collar American jobs. I don't like it. I think the cables have a lot to do with it. I'm thinking back to when I was president, we got tons of criticism, but it didn't seem day in and day out quite as personal as some of these talk show people. And it's not just the right. There are plenty of people on the left. Rachel Maddow. I mean, here's a couple of sick puppies. That last one, the cross-dressing liberal lesbian in New York City one, that one meant the most to me, I think. Because that was 2006. That was from Bob Ney, who not long after sending out that robocall in the 2006 election, had to go to prison in the Jack Abramoff scandal. It was oddly wondering and flattering to have one of his last political acts be calling me, me, a radio host at that point, a cross-dressing ultra-liberal lesbian from New York City. I made it into an Ohio Republican robocall? The poor lady who had to read the robocall script for him. What did she think when she got to that line, I wonder? Anyway, that meant a lot to me. But now, now, the struggling presidential campaign of Rick Santorum has taken a page out of the Bob Ney on his way to jail playbook. Rick Santorum does not have great prospects for winning the Republican presidential nomination. As an incumbent senator in his last election, he lost by 18 points. This last quarter of fundraising, when Mitt Romney raised more than $18 million, when Ron Paul, John Huntsman, and even Tim Pawlenty raised more than $4 million each, when Herman Cain, head of a mafia-themed pizza chain, and Newt Gingrich, the man whose entire campaign leadership quit, raised more than $2 million each, during that same time, Rick Santorum barely cleared a half mil. But now he is trying to raise his desperately needed cash with an appeal to supporters about what turns up on the internet when you Google the word Santorum. Have you ever Googled Santorum? Just the word Santorum? Uh, Rick Santorum's new fundraising letter apparently is trying to make sure that everybody does that. The letter opens up with the description of last week's Bill Maher show on HBO, which featured the Seattle columnist Dan Savage as a guest, when Rick Santorum had said that homosexuality was the equivalent of man-on-dog sexual activity. You may recall it was Mr. Savage who took it upon himself in response to Google bomb the word Santorum, so when you look it up online, yeah. Uh, Mr. Santorum's fundraising letter reads, quote, Instead of focusing on the issues and having an intellectual conversation, they broke into vile attacks against me. I refuse to repeat these disgusting, sexually explicit references because these ridiculous attacks are far too inappropriate. Savage and his perverted sense of humor is the reason why my children cannot Google their father's name. Still the fundraising letter. Uh, to this day, liberals like Rachel Maddow serve as Savage's lackeys on national television, pushing his smut. Mm. That is why I need your support today and your contribution of $25, $50, $100, or $250 to my campaign. With your help, we will make this country great again. If you were a supporter of Rick Santorum who had not yet heard about the whole Google Santorum problem, if you received that letter, you know, my children cannot Google their father's name, what would you do? Would you run to your checkbook, outraged by the mere mention of these liberal names? Dan Savage, Bill Maher, Rachel Maddow? Would you race to your checkbook to blindly scrawl out a check for $25, $50, $100 right away? 
Or would you, out of curiosity, Google Santorum to see what all the hullabaloo is about? Imagine the fundraising committee discussion about this. All right, what we know we will accomplish by doing this is that every one of our most core supporters across the country will be told, in effect, go Google the word Santorum. So if they didn't know about the Google problem before, we're telling all of our supporters about it now. That's not the risk, that is the certainty. But measure that against the uncertain fundraising power of using the names of a man with a sex advice column in Seattle, and a comedian with a once weekly show on cable, and the nine o'clock lady on MSNBC. It is very flattering to have people try to raise money off of the sheer outrageousness of the mention of your name or your description, especially when you've never met those people and you think of them as kind of a bigger deal than you. It's flattering. It's also hilarious. So Rick Santorum, knock yourself out. It worked out great for Bob Ney.